Well, hi, I'm Paul Bryan, and uh, I, I don't know Steve. We're going to visit for uh, a little bit with Steve Zaki from the Milwaukee Mile. I don't know if there's anything more strange than a racetrack when it's completely empty. It's, it's just so weird to have all of the surroundings, all of the makings of a place that has history as deep as Milwaukee uh, has and have it empty. And, and that certainly isn't going to be the case uh, come Labor Day. No, it certainly won't be. And it, it is. If you've ever been, a, you know, us being involved in motorsports, we've had opportunities for whatever reason, especially at night. Uh, same thing. It's, it's strange. It's, it's eerie. Yeah. Especially if you're in, in setting up. Uh, I've been involved in situations where I had to do setups uh, the week prior to a racetrack or to, to a race here at, at the mile. And, and you, you know, I don't believe in ghosts, but it almost seems like the ghosts of the world. Oh no! Are I think that I the think they're here. Are there, I know? think they're here. You know, it's just it's it's an odd feeling. It it certainly is. I magical. met Rex Mates just walking in <laughs> just just a moment ago. He was there. He said, "Are you back?" Said, but yeah, it's it. There's a definite buzz in the air, um, and it, it, it certainly feels good. I mean, it, it warms my heart that. Um, that we're gonna have two two national events this this year uh, with the NASCAR trucks, a, a double header with the IndyCars Labor Day weekend. Hmm. It's been a long uh, a long time out in the, in the wilderness, so to, so to speak. But it's certainly good having racing back uh, at, at the Milwaukee Mile. We're gonna get deeper into some history, but but let's explore what's happened recently. Last time an IndyCar race ran here was when? 2015. Okay, so 15, so we've got an eight year gap mm -hmm. since that happened. Uh, this, it was always satisfying to be leaving Indianapolis uh, and for a whole month, we would be at Indianapolis and, and the pace and the, the you know, but, it, but it, it became so protracted. And I remember Leon Mandel from Auto Week, and uh, he and I were having breakfast the, the morning after the race. And I said, I never thought I'd say these words, but God, I can't wait to get to Milwaukee. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> he said, yeah, I know. I'm sick of Indy already. And, and the character of the tracks uh, are just so radically different. Mm -hmm. uh, two and a half mile oval at uh, Indianapolis. And it switches to a drastically different setup for the cars. Uh, naturally, there's there's a, uh, a speedway set up for the cars with with low drag, and here there's a road course. I mean, you're gonna everybody's gonna be seeing actually the road course bodywork that goes on here because you've only speeds are not gonna be as high, but I would contend that it's the best one mile bull ring anywhere. It's it's a marvelous place to watch a race. It, it's interesting talking th you know, th throughout the years to talking to drivers, current drivers and drivers of the past. Every one of them from Roger Ward, to AJ, the Parnelli, to some of the drivers like Scott Dixon of today, all say the same thing. It's a driver's track. Yeah. And it's a track that is imperative that you have your car set up the right way, comfortable because of the options that you have as a driver with the multiple lanes. You can go high, you can cut low, and then as the race goes on, you especially need that because uh, when lap traffic come in, comes into effect. Mm -hmm. And we've heard some drivers in, in the past bitch about it, and I, I, I kind of laugh about it because in the early 90s, and you, you remember this, when you had guys that were hooked up, whether it was a Nigel Mansell or Mario or, or Michael Andretti, 
and and you had guys in the pack, you know, in the back of the pack. They were sometimes, you know, four or five seconds off, and they were lapping cars, you know, probably every ten laps. Yeah. So uh, traffic was much more of an issue, I think, especially in the late '80s, early '90s, than this day. Well, I th I think that's what makes the race more interesting. Uh, on on a super speedway, it's damn hard to make up a lap on somebody. But here, depending on uh, uh, the track, depending on how flags fall, uh, if somebody, God forbid, does something uh, that uh, alters body work beyond a buff, mm -hmm. <laughs> then uh, you, you can get laps back pretty easily here. And it changes the character of the race. It makes it more exciting. And, and from a fan standpoint, it allows this setup, allows everybody to see most all of the track. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, that's just so dramatically different from uh, a place like Indianapolis where max you're going to, even if you sat in the, at the start finish line, you're just going to see the exit of four and the entrance and maybe halfway through one. Uh, and, and here, you're going to see some colossal uh, passes uh, for people. And it's because you can go a high lane, mm -hmm. a low lane, uh, depending on where you're going to go uh, and, and the way your car is working. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see this year, you know, everybody's been, you know, especially over the last uh, year or so, Team Penske has been the, the team to beat, not only in IndyCar, but it seems like NASCAR. And, uh, and yeah, he's, he's not having too. a bad year. Huh? Yeah, I mean it's it's been incredible. <laughs> they they kind of had a burp or two a couple of years ago, and they've uh, Tim Sindrick has really gotten that that team back on on track. Well, there there are folks who will argue they say, well, Roger owns the series. You know, he's he's doing that. Nobody nobody cares when that green flag drops. Right. Who owns the series? And I would submit that Roger has done a great deal of good for the series, uh, and and for the signature uh, uh, property at, at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. But that brings into this track also the improvements that have been made here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've certainly gone. Even beyond what I thought they were going to do, uh, there was originally a, a, a three uh, a three step improvement uh, plan, uh, three years uh, or one year for three million, and then another one year three million and another. And you decided and, to finance it on your own. Well, thankfully the state is. This guy's wonderful. That. Exactly, he's you know, absolutely this is wonderful. One thing, uh, you know, being a state-run facility. The state has made that investment, and you got to give them a tip of the hat for that. And uh, whether and it was basically a situation upgrading, uh, upgrading safer barriers, upgrading some of the facilities, even the infrastructure, the wiring coming in here. They spent over uh, close to a hundred grand mm -hmm. just on redoing all the wiring that comes in from the the park itself inside the track. And there, you know, as as you know, with a racetrack, there's so many layers of, of of operations involved. Whether it's the the track itself, it's the grounds, it's it's doing setups and having facilities for the media, for the teams, for your uh, now nowadays for the RVs and everything that's involved. It's, it's certainly quite a team you got to put together too. And being involved with that, people I don't think are, can appreciate what's involved. I mean, even Milwaukee here uh, is a, a scale uh, not only in size to Indianapolis or at Daytona, you know. So it, it's a lesser, but still quite amount of quite a amount but, of people. But but it still it certainly has uh, economic impact for the area. It certainly does. And the uh, city of West Dallas has benefited uh, over the years, and I think they're 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 starting to appreciate it more mm -hmm. as they see other facilities what the milwaukee bucks have been able to do with downtown milwaukee what the packers have been able to do for green green bay i think the city of west dallas is is kind of uh, taking another look and saying well maybe you have a sports facility let's 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 utilize that to our benefit let's the, the mile it. the mile actually predates all of those though 
It certainly does. It dates back uh, when the state, I think, bought this land in 1891, and it uh, was a horse track, uh, you know, obviously, as most one-mile tracks were, uh-huh. uh, dirt tracks. And uh, the first race was, was held here in 1903, uh, won by William Jones in a Columbia. And I have no idea what a Columbia is. I don't it's, it's a, it's a, it was a race car, short, short run. And back then, it was uh, short races. Um, you know, they didn't come here and watch one big race. These were little short one lap, two lap, five lap, ten lap races. Because that's basically as far as the cars could go at that time. Because mm-hmm. the, the race, racing was in its infancy, as was the automobile. Unfortunately, that, that, that same weekend, they had the first fatality out here with uh, Frank Day was killed in a sister car to the Ford 999, which was a famous oh, car. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, but it was called the, the sister car was called the Red Devil. And uh, Frank Day is an interesting story because uh, his family was from Ohio. And they were barnstorming through the Midwest. Uh, Barney Oldfield and that, and that group and all those guys were, were barnstorming through the Midwest and they came through Ohio and he kind of saw the group and said, ah, I'd, I'd like to be a part of that. and and started to work for the for that for that group and and started started to drive and unfortunately the wheel broke out here in turn four and pitched him out of the car and he hit a hit a rock uh, obviously before the days of helmets uh barney oldfield probably probably a leather helmet yeah, if which, that, which, yeah. which looked like a, a cap yeah and barney oldfield unfortunately was was got injured uh, earlier uh, in the month, and he was not here that day. So that was the, f- the first fatality, unfortunately, at the Milwaukee Mile. But they've raced, uh, the first 100-mile race uh, wasn't held here until uh, 1915. And a lot of people also may not may not be aware that they actually held a pair of 24-hour races at, at the Milwaukee Mile here in about 19... Uh, 1910, 1911-ish. Oh, still time. when the industry was yeah. in its infancy. And those were basically, uh, uh, the, the manufacturers would use these to show, hey, our, our cars are reliable. Feel free, you know, you, have, yeah. you can have the faith that these things are going to work when you drive them, when you purchase the car. So that's, it was more or less an endurance race to show the, the viability of the automobile. That's still like some of the Italian drivers uh, of, of that era. I, I've seen many stories where the pit stops, of course, would be a lot longer mm-hmm. than before. The drivers would basically have lunch. Uh, you know, you'd be able to have a sandwich. The Italian guys would be having a couple of glasses of wine. Uh, we don't do that anymore because no. uh, who wants a sandwich? <laughs> but you know, back then, some of those races were, you know, well, if, especially if they're a point-to-point race, they're a lot longer. But uh, some of the first in, uh, first Indianapolis 500 was over six hours. That's mm-hmm. like a race at Dover now in, in the NASCAR series. Yeah, and that's a hundred-mile race. Yeah, hello. <laughs> and that's just for the last three laps. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, we we've been talking a lot about Indy cars. But uh, uh, the other event that we're uh, going to be staging here at Milwaukee is a NASCAR truck event. And that is a highly competitive series. Yeah, it certainly is. Track Enterprise, which is run by Bob Sargent of Illinois, has done a fantastic job of uh, bringing racing uh, and investing also in, in the track. He's been running races here for about 10 years with the ASA series, with the Arca, uh, Arca series and late models and whatnot. And uh, he, he's, he's made it uh, uh, a viable option, th- this track. And he, he's been kind of keeping the lights on, has done a great job. And we're so happy for him that he was able to bring the, the Craftsman truck, uh, truck series here um, so this year, it's uh, in August, uh, the, the Craftsman Truck Series will be at the Milwaukee Mile. And uh, last year, uh, fantastic turnout, a fantastic race, won by Grant Infinger. Um, once again, uh, looking forward to seeing uh, those guys come out, along with the ARCA Series. Uh, so, I mean, you got something for, for, you know, there'll be a lot of fans that'll be here for both events, but... Uh, for those for the stock car fans and that kind of something for them, open wheel guys. So 
it, it's a lot of fun for a lot is, of opportunities uh, for fans. Is, is Wisconsin more of a NASCAR fan base than an IndyCar fan base? It, it's hard Cause, to see. Because yeah. I, I, I want to see how you answer I, that. You know, yeah. that's a good question because... That's why I asked. Uh, why I asked. You would think... I, I mean both. I mean, I know I know it's a, it's a cop-out, but it's always been that way. Yeah. The, the going back to the USAC days, so it was traditional to have six races at the Milwaukee Mile hmm. in the '60s and '70s. You had four stock car races and, and two Indy car races. So the 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 traditional uh, uh, schedule back then was that you'd have a June the June Indy car race, you'd have a July stock car race, which uh, became the Miller Two Hundred. An interesting side point with that race, that was the first uh, nationally sanctioned race to have a, a, that had a, a title sponsor. Miller Brewery stepped up uh, to sponsor the race in 1968, and that was one of the most lucrative races on the stock car series on either NASCAR or, or USAC. Um, in 19... About 1968, uh, 69, 70 or so, hmm. that that race was on par for prize money as the the Charlotte race and also the Firecracker 400. So it's a very very lucrative lucrative race. It brought a lot of people in, and then you had the three fair park races, and yet usually you would have a, a stock two stock car races included one on Thursday, and then the uh, Indy car race, and then September you had would have the 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 250 mile uh, stock car race, the Governor's Cup 250. Uh -huh. So, and you would have unilaterally the 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 Rex Mays uh, class. Well, wait a minute, we're, we're going to get into okay. that. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll talk. But about I mean, that, but. They, they all drew well. I mean, it wasn't unusual from anywhere from eighteen thousand to thirty-five thousand people for those races. Okay, we we broached the subject. Who was Rex Mays? Rex Mays was a, a one of the top IndyCar drivers, drivers uh, pre-war, mm -hmm. and um, it, and then the World War II happened, and war, uh, Rex was already in his 30s at the time, and he became a, a pilot in the Air Force and would ferry B-17s among other planes to uh, England. Okay. From he, he was from California originally, so he'd fly the planes uh, cross country up to New Newfoundland, and then uh, they fly to Ireland and then to uh, England during the war. But after the war, uh, he, he was a top-notch driver, drove at Indianapolis, never won the race, finished second several times. And in 1948, uh, there's a race here, and Duke Dismore hit the wall in the south turn here, was thrown out. Rex Mays came upon uh, the, the wreck, spun his car into the wall to avoid Duke, who was laying in the middle of the track. It was mm -hmm. a dirt track back then. Lots of dust. Rex jumped from his car, ran in front of Duke, and was waving off the drivers uh, so he would not get hit. Um, it was then, uh, unfortunately, uh, about a year and a half later, they're racing at Del Mar, California, a similar track um, in Southern California, and unfortunately, uh, Ray, Rex clipped the inside wall, the car turned and flipped, and mm. he got thrown out, unfortunately. He got struck and killed. I've actually been there to, Del Mar? to Del Mar, which is now yeah. returned to a horse track. Right. That was that track. And um, unfortunately, Rex was killed. Uh, the following uh, year, Tom Marchese uh, decided to name the race in his honor, the 100-mile June race. Fitting. Fitting. Uh, uh, let's get back here for a second to something that uh, that we talked about before. Is Wisconsin a NASCAR or an IndyCar uh, fan base? And we, we talked about uh, all of the reasons why NASCAR had such history here. But let's remember, too, that the Wisconsin fan has tremendous interest in both uh, uh, IndyCar here, and then IndyCar at Road America, mm -hmm. which which has great draw as well. And I, I I don't 
I have absolutely no statistical data on this, uh, which is how I make up most of my data. Uh, but, but nevertheless, I would tend to believe it's more a NASCAR crowd than an IndyCar crowd just because of the short track activity all over the state that, uh, that really attracts a lot of fans who, who still enjoy Friday night, Saturday night, uh, uh, short track stuff, dirt track stuff, who knows what. Uh, and, and I don't think that it's quite tolerating IndyCars. I, I just think that it's uh, two courses of, of a meal. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I would posit that any race fan is a race fan. Frankly, I don't care if it's NASCAR or it's IndyCar or Formula One or three guys on Schwinn's. Uh, I enjoy racing. Well, that, 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 that kind of goes back to especially older fans like us who, who you know, TV, <laughs> TV wasn't but like what it is now. So back when I was younger, you know, ABC Wild World of Sports, you didn't care what came out. If there was yeah. race on, you were going to watch it, whether it was the, the Gator Nationals, whether it was IndyCar racing, stock car racing. Midgets, or even the, or, or the, even figure eight race races from Ascot, uh, yes. uh, from uh, Islip, New York, or that town one too. Yeah, yeah. And, and you didn't care what it was. You yeah. were you were just excited that there was uh, some type of motorsports on TV, and you were, and when you got your your periodical, whether it was uh, National Speed Sport News, Midwest Racing News, all uh -huh. week, you name it, uh, you know they covered it all, and you read it all. So you you knew the Can Am guys, you knew yeah. the, the 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 USAC guys, and and I think now everything has become specialized. Whether it's music, whether it's entertainment, and even racing, and you have the recent surge of Formula One. You know, there's people that are watching Formula One that have no idea about other types of racing because they watched it on Netflix and they've become enamored with it. So it'll be interesting to see how. IndyCar tries to pull in those people. Obviously, it's been a few years since IndyCar's been here, uh, but they're they're working it. Uh, it's a partner. It's a great partnership that that they're working on, and I'm sure we'll be talking about I'd, that. I'd, I'd say it's it's a big opportunity to re-embrace the fan mm -hmm. and to reintroduce them to it. So many people that I talk to, they'll they'll ask me. Well, Formula One is just like IndyCar. No, it's, it's a yeah. completely different animal. And, uh, you know, here's why, and here's the reason, here's weight, there's length, there's, you know, quack, 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 all of the different reasons why. Uh, and one will beget the other. Uh, so, you know, I think we have the opportunity again now in Milwaukee. Uh, and, and I did the track announcing here for, what, five, six years, I guess. And there was a vibe mm -hmm. that came from, uh, from the fans. Qualifying was a lot different from the way it was before. Um, uh, I got, man, qualifying, was rocking, and everybody showed up for it, and and it was really really fun. Uh, now that format is not going to change. You know they, they'll still do what they do now, uh, but just the overall vibe of things, and there's proximity of market to. Uh, to Madison, you've got Madison fans. You're going to have Elkhart Lake fans, you know, but that's really not a big metro area. Greater metropolitan Plymouth, uh, but uh, Chicago fans, uh, you can, you're going to draw from Rockford. You're going to draw from a lot of places, and and I hope that uh, IndyCar is going to be wise enough to say we have a great opportunity here to re-engage and hope that they do that not only on a promotional level, but to make that promotion uh, very much unlike Formula One, which is where there is interaction with the drivers, mm -hmm. with the teams, 
Uh, in Formula One, it's it's a pretty exclusive uh, snooty club, well, is and, it, it, and, it, and here not. It, it's a it's a great partnership. <laughs> um, you know, so someone who has worked at the at the, at the Milwaukee Mile, and um, and who's uh, been uh, involved with with the state of Wisconsin. Uh, in the past, they've they've gone. Uh, uh, it wasn't always a, a great partnership. Hmm. I mean, it was more of a tenant uh, landlord uh, situation with uh, Sherry Black and her group. What she's been able to do, and what with um, uh, Hyvee that's come on board, what they've been able to do in Iowa. I'm really looking forward to uh, seeing what what they're able to do. The um, it's very important uh, that all, all of them are working together. And so far, what we've seen, it, it, it's quite true. It looks like it's working out. So, you know, you got Hy-Vee, which is excellent for a sponsorship activation. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sherry Black and her group here at the Wisconsin State Fair Park is working with Penske Entertainment to bring this on board. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, Roger Penske, when he was here uh, for the press conference, you know, you know, he was... They were prodding him. Well, what what what's a good what what are you shooting for? And he, and his thirty thousand. Somebody mentioned throughout thirty thousand. And can you hit that? He says, I hope so. I think we can. Uh-huh. And so it, the number's been thrown out there. He wants thirty thousand. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, how that works out. I think they can do it. You know, if if everything works out. Now, obviously, there's weather concerns or whatnot. Sure. You know, it was very frustrating. Um, uh, I would say four out of six um, events that we had here, we had rain the morning of the race, which kills your walk. Well, sure, you can't race on it. You cannot race on an oval in the the, rain. Even though the weather forecast, and we were able to get the race in, people wake up. There's a psychological thing. It's raining out. Yeah. What else can we do? You know, it, 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 it it's it's very frustrating. But uh, I'm excited to see what, what they were able to do this year, and uh, along with the truck series, too, and Bob Sargent and Track Enterprises. So our our level cool. of uh, commitment to the, the sport and history in it is uh, uh, deeper than the average bear. I always joke, you know, when people say, how did you get involved in this? And I always talk about having my lobotomy, and, uh, and that's what sold me. How did you get involved in this, Steve? Well, uh, just so happens, uh, I was uh, brought up for a short time. I was raised in West Dallas, and my first, the first house I lived at after I was born was about a block and a half to the west of the racetrack. Um, 1957. The my, siren song. Yes. The uh, 1957, uh, my sister, was, my older sister was born, and my father bought a movie camera. And... Of course, it went a new family. Movie cameras were, were, were big in the late 50s. Sure. And my grandfather uh, worked at, at, at the fair on the grounds here. And one day, he invited my dad to come out uh, for the 200-miler IndyCar race. And my dad shot a little bit of footage. And he came to the next race, and he met a fellow named Mike Billings, who was the number two guy on the... Uh, fire crew and they kind of hit it off and he was like oh you shoot I see you're shooting film he says you know uh, we would like to get footage of the fire crew he says would you be think you'd be able to get footage of us working and especially like doing the cleanup huh. and my dad yeah we can do something and so my, that's how my dad got his first uh, pit pass and, 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 and media pass if you want to call it back then uh, back in 1960 and uh, Mike Billings was the father of uh, Dean Billings, Dean and Dick Billings, who would later race midgets and became uh, national midget uh, drivers, quite quite known and successful, especially Dean. Um, from that, he started uh, shoot movies, and uh, Tom Marchese, Tom and Carl Marchese, who were the promoters here, they started uh, dating back to the 50s. Uh, it was a different setup back then, uh, back in the 20s and 30s, you had a lot of hucksters, pr- promoters would come into town, and it wasn't uncommon for a promoter to come into town, put up some posters, say, auto race, 
come on in, get in, you know, you get the tickets and the guys would be racing out in the track and he'd get in his car and take off and the, <laughs> the, dri the drivers would, you know, there'd be a winner and they're okay, well, where's the prize money and the promoters down the, down the road. But the uh, Marchese's were, uh, were business owners in the third ward. Uh, in the in the east part of Milwaukee, they're they're respected businessmen, and the four the fair board really liked how the, when they did a race here, it was very professional. Everybody was happy, and they offered them uh, exclusive rights. We'll give you can do all you, you can run all the races here, and at that time for that, uh, it was a, a good business setup. You know, I mean, if you think of it, Indianapolis, you, you know what their promotion budget was? They had a billboard. Uh, North of uh, north of this, this of Indianapolis and one south, yeah. and they'd give out Christmas cards in those glasses. That's mm -hmm. all they did for promotion back then. Well, you know, back then you could uh, put an ad in, in the newspaper, you know, and Dad would be at the breakfast table. Hey, the auto races are today. Let's go, you know. And every family would go to the auto races. Uh -huh. Nowadays, with uh, soccer practice and you got kids doing recitals and whatnot, everything is 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 mapped out a um, you know a month or two in advance, so things are certainly different. But getting back to myself, so my dad became a, a, a movie photographer. Uh, There's a situation where AJ Foyt uh, crashed his Lotus here in 1966, hmm. and got car went up in flames, and car came to the stop. He went to he went to pull himself out of the car, burned his hands. He fell back in. He got out. And he, I rolling remember. on the track and I remember. he was bitching to the uh, newspapers. It took these guys so too long and Tom Marchese took took the safety, uh, the fire crew very seriously. He said and he was in the hospital and he, he was not happy. He said, AJ, he said, we were there within twenty seconds and I got Bill Zaki here, we can bring the movies up here, we'll show you. And if you look in the speech for news the following the following week, there's a retraction. AJ apologizes <laughs> about complaining about the fire crew. And, I, I don't know. I, I I just can't imagine AJ bitching about it. <laughs> Go figure. Well, if you're on fire, you know, you're not in a good mood. So, anyways, so being brought up, uh, you know, my dad would have uh, race parties and whatnot. Drivers would be over at the house. And, and, and so I was raised in sport. And uh, I got involved. Uh, became a paramedic and uh, actually started work uh, track safety for Angel Park Speedway and Hills Corner Speedway. And then eventually uh, met some people at the Milwaukee Mile and I was getting into videos and, and videography at the time. And uh, I met Dick Stoller. And I was introduced to Dick Stoller and Dick Stoller was looking for a videographer just to get B-roll footage at the Milwaukee Mile. So, mm -hmm. I started to work for the same group you you were working for in the early 90s, 1993. I started to work here as yeah. a videographer for a year. Dick, Dick, by the way, was one of the money guys, one of the original money guys for uh, uh, Carl Haas mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Paul Newman when they when they were doing racing. And uh, geez, I, I still talk to his son almost Tom. Yep. Yeah, almost every day. And uh, and he and his dad, who Dick and I had dinner about a year ago, and talking about how vastly different uh, the marketing setups are for tracks and for individual cars as well. Yes, uh, these days versus those days. Let's let's touch on something that also is extremely different and, and really has grown even in the eight year gap that we're just talking about here. And, and that's the availability to reach out to targeted audiences. We, we talked about the promotion that, that used to be one billboard, one billboard, yep. that's it, maybe a newspaper ad, let's go to the race. Now, and, and frankly, this is uh, a lot of what's happened with auto shows as well in general, because before manufacturers said, well, this is the means by which we can touch our, our audience. We can get them there. Well, you know, like four or five years ago, six years ago uh, and through the pandemic, 
All of a sudden, the guy who was sitting at the marketing table of the manufacturer says, wait a minute, we're going to spend X amount of dollars on this auto show. And we're going to spend this, but you give me that money and I'll put you directly in front of our current customer base, our targeted customer base, our conquest customer base, uh, all of the different groups, and I'll put it in his hand six times a day. And it's, it's just so different from walking through and saying, well, I may have an impact or I may be able to do that. So social media is going to be impacting everything that we do. And, and certainly, uh, IV has been able to do that extremely effectively with their social media programs. And, and I would suggest that tracks are now doing that as well, too. Yeah, there, there's also, it, it's interesting to layer that, even, even going to the, the short tracks and that, there's a big, there's a great debate of people uh, whether there's like Flow TV and all these online uh, uh, online coverage of, of daily tracks. I mean, you can pretty much almost every day if you want to see a live race at a short track. Mm -hmm. And I don't have that because I'm married and I want to stay married. And I know I would be a slippery <laughs> road if you go down there. But I know a lot of other people that do. And it... it and there's a quite, there's quite a debate. A lot of a lot of track owners are afraid because they think we're going to lose fans in the stands. But they're also getting paid for them to. Well, they're they're the getting paid, but, so but they're able a, to reach out. Yeah, but they're able to reach out to to. And exactly. I think they're growing the sport too. too. Yeah, exactly. And, 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 uh, these track owners have to realize that. Yeah, and it's different. And I understand the pushback. Right. Uh, just because it's different. Uh, but I think it really has to, to be embraced and, and, you know, everybody's doing it. Yeah, it certainly is. So, uh, okay, so NASCAR race, uh, end of the summer, Labor Day weekend for Indy cars. What else do we have to know? Well, there are a lot of improvements going on at the track. Uh, there's there's fencing going in on the, on the north turn. There's upgrades and whatnot, just to bring it up to safety specs. Uh, not only to 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 bring it you know bring it up current uh, or to improve what was there, but also bring it up from the safety specs that they had ten years ago mm -hmm. to what they're requesting now. So you're going to see new fencing on the inside on the north turn, uh, some higher fencing. Um, uh, the safe, safer barriers, uh, the drainage on the inside of the North Turn has been repaired. Pit Road is going to be uh, replaced. So a lot of upgrades which will continue. And then um, it, it's, it'll be interesting to see with the infrastructure too, things and uh, improvements in, of the, in the infield. So I think fans will be surprised uh, when they come back this year uh, how, how, how vastly I don't want to say vastly changed, but they'll be able to see the improvements being made. Well, you know, and they may even be somewhat invisible to the fan. Mm -hmm. But in order to have a show, you got to have a show. And things have changed in terms of safety requirements and, and safer, S-A-F-E-R, safer barriers, a type of barrier that makes the track a, a whole lot safer. Well, Boy, did well, that I, sound redundant. And I don't think... I, I, I don't was think from the to, Department of Redundancy Department. I, I don't think you want a, re, re, uh, a replay of what happened here, I think, in 1999 with Christian Fittipaldi. You yeah. long turn two yeah. and put a hole in the wall. Yeah. You don't want that. No. Not recommended. Yes. Especially for Christian. Yes. <laughs> but, uh, uh, well, listen, it's, it's been marvelous talking with you. We'll do this again. We're, we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, keep folks updated uh, as to what's going on in the track. And uh, I, th I think we could probably get uh, uh, into some individual interesting stories of uh, folks because, believe me, folks, 
the the fans, uh, the drivers, the teams, uh, you you think they're interesting. Boy, do we have some stories to tell. <laughs> There's some really interesting and uh, quirky folks. But it's it's great. You know, fans want to know that stuff. So. Yeah, well, we'll take a look at this wall too later too. There's a lot of excited stories I want to tell about this wall and and the history of this track is you know compared you know uh, on parallel with Indianapolis and some others. Sure. You talk about 1903 uh, racing and, and throughout the years and uh, it, it's every 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 year you know there's been a activity at this track. So hmm. well, Steve. even even the Green Bay Packers played here. And uh, the NFL championship was played here in 1939. I had no idea. Yeah. In fact, uh, uh, the, if you look at the bathrooms, uh, there's a great building on the... In what, Ray is in there? Uh, that's actually oh, where he okay. does locker rooms. Right. And, 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 a, and, a, and a tip, uh, I found out when I was a kid, the drivers he saw to change in their in their uniform. Oh, there. that's it. So I yeah. would camp myself out there when I was a kid, when I was about ten years old, and that's where you would get your. That's autographs. not as unusual as as folks might think. Yeah. Uh, I saw that in the you know mid to late sixties at Road America. There was like one wooden John. It's not really what it is now, yeah. and this predates the mega motor homes and sure. everything else. And all of a sudden, you'd see a guy putting on their driver's suit and, uh, and well, I'm going out to drive. Can <laughs> go ahead and do it. Well, all right. Uh, we'll be back, and we'll have more stories, and we'll have more history of the Milwaukee Mile. And I hope that, uh, that uh, everybody enjoyed our, our initial walk down this path. Steve, thanks so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Take care.